wondering, do you anticipate CD to be your punt returner uh, week one? I guess tune in. Um, there's a couple guys we're still working through. <laughs> so it hasn't been totally determined yet. I guess, you know, a couple more days to figure it out. And I was in Oakland. Al Davis one time got mad at me. He said, never give information, only get it. And that one, that one, uh, that one stuck with me since about 12 years ago. So tune in. <laughs> What do you like about the core guys you have on your unit uh, for you with, with getting March and, and Goodwin and, and I guess Joe Thomas uh, back here to, to maybe pair with some of the younger guys that you've not seen live? Yeah, um, you know, playing against the Cowboys when I was in L.A. in 17, 18, and 19, had the opportunity to compete against them, so really had some great unbiased, you know, scouting reports on them, and they were all very positive. So to be on their team now, it's really cool to know the person behind the face mask, and they're pretty darn good players, and it's a really nice mix of some veteran special teams guys like Joe and, um, and Justin March, C.J. Goodwin, mixed with some youth, and they've been good mentors, and I expect you know, great performances from all of them, especially the veterans right away. Yesterday, it seemed like he played a lot of special team snaps in Seattle a couple years ago. He did. Played against them, I believe, twice in 2018, and even last year when I was in LA. So we had an opportunity to compete against him a couple of times. And I remember him also written up in our scouting reports that he was a strong, tough, versatile wide receiver that played a lot of spots for Seattle on special teams. And I just remember the play he had against Minnesota on kickoff at the very end of the game. I believe it was last year where he forced a fumble when Seattle was up six, basically to ice the game. So he's made some good plays. He's a good blocker. He's a good, tough body. And we'll see how he fits in with every, you know, a couple other guys that, are, that we have that are pretty good at wide receiver on special teams. Coach, when the schedule came out, you obviously knew that you were going to be going back to L.A. There's so much emotion about everybody returning to football, but is there going to be anything more with, with you going back there this week? I had a lot of great memories. Four years in St. Louis with the Rams, four years in L.A. with the Rams. They gave me great opportunity. I would say that, honestly, I don't look at this game as any different than if we were playing anybody else. I know you probably think I'm just saying that, but, you know, they treated me great, and I'm looking forward to game one no matter who it was against. But it will be, it'll be cool in a way just to compete against the guys that, you know, I coached for eight years there, especially, you know, Hecker, McQuaid, and a couple of the veteran special teams guys. But I honestly can say that um, I'm excited for game one, whether it's the Rams or anybody else. You can try we haven't, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since you did that Jeopardy game with the team. How long have you been doing that? What was sort of the genesis of that game back when you were with the Rams? And what do you think it did for the camaraderie in the year where in the offseason y'all couldn't be together as a team? Yeah, we, I started it in 2008 when I got to Oakland. And I got the idea, actually, when I was in Baltimore as the assistant special teams coach from Rex Ryan. And so when I got to Oakland, I kind of made my own Jeopardy template. And it has definitely grown over the years. I've done it every year since 2008. And I've definitely improved the quality of the, the questions and the production. But it, it's just great for the team to get together for about an hour and you know compete in a fun way where it's really no football involved. It's just good back and forth banner and putting some rookies in some spots. And it's pretty much always structured for the vets to win. So, so they got a nice steak dinner out of it. But um, it's always been something fun that that I've been able to do at the blessing of the head coaches I've worked for since 2008. Yeah, they were right. It's definitely skewed for the vets to win it because you split them up into three groups, the rookies, second, third year guys, and vets four plus. So in 13 years, the rookies have never won. The middle group has won once by accident, and the vets have won 12 times. So, um, yeah, if they think they were cheated or it's unfair, then they're correct. <laughs> and we'll, and, John, and what were one or two of your favorite questions you asked 
uh, of the rookies. Yeah, we always we, yeah, I skew it against the rookies where I give them a category where they don't get a pick, and I'll put up a word they got to spell or something like that where there's just no chance they're going to get us, they're going to lose money. Um, and then we've had some pretty good questions, a lot of music, a lot of movies, some, some historical NFL football questions, um, baby pictures of some of our veterans, and they got to guess who it is. That's why it's skewed to the vets, because of course the vets will know it's them. But every year it changes, <laughs> but it is fun. Last question for Michael. What's your, what's your assessment of Chris Jones, and, and how is he doing physically this year, coming off of what he dealt with last year? I wasn't really aware last year competing, when we competed against the Cowboys, that he had injury issues until I got here. And since I've been here, he's been punting great. And he hasn't shown any wear and tear from those injuries that he supposedly had last fall. So I just see a guy who's strong, he's veteran, he's been really consistent, and he's been just a great guy to work with. So all pluses so far on that. And I'll know he'll produce on game day because he's done it before and he'll probably do it again better than he has done in the past with a healthy body. That, that matters a lot to those specialists, as we've talked about. Michael Gelkin, go ahead with the last question. You've seen Greg Zerline at his best. You also have seen him when maybe he's not at his best. Where is he right now? I have. I've seen Greg at his best. I've seen him not at his best. That's the beauty of coaching and the relationships. I would say Greg is right now pretty close to the best he's been. I think the best he's been was a couple years ago. He made the Pro Bowl. He was, I don't know, he was 90 something percent. That was the best he's been and he was healthy. And I really feel like with the operation we have with LP and Chris and kind of a reinvigorated um, man that this is gonna be great for him. I think he's gonna perform as well he, as he ever has. And that's my expectation and that's his.